My mother was very quiet. My father was out of sight. Well, he'd been an ambulance driver, and he came back from the war clinically depressed. So most of the time I spent with him growing up, he would hide. At dinner, when we would eat, there was just never a word, you know. Nobody ever talked to me about anything. And I think people who are loners or who have lives that they have to kind of overcome when they're young, I think that they get a strength that's very useful later on. Everybody thought I was going to be an actress. It was just considered inevitable. And my mother, in an effort to try to get me out of Poland, Ohio, pushed me into the theater because they couldn't afford to give me tap dancing lessons or singing lessons or anything like that. And my whole life changed because it became about the theater. And from the first moment that I got a job in advertising, which was in a department store, that whole theater experience that I'd been having all those years just all came and worked for me. Moving to Doyle Dane proved to me that I'd been right from the start, that it was the most exciting business you could possibly be in, and it was the right place for me. But it was print. Even on television, it was print. It was moving print. I wanted to turn it into the theater. Isn't that wonderful? So I left all day in Bernbach and went to Jack Tinker and Partners and sort of ran that for a period of time. And while I was there, I tried to get my clients to do completely, to do big things, you know, that were very dramatic. Anybody who's a terrific ad person, from the creative side anyway, usually has those two qualities. They're salesmen and they're entertainers in one. She had it to perfection. It was a time when all planes had come out of the army. They weren't thinking food. They weren't thinking services. They, when you were in them, they, they were as dull as they could possibly be. Everybody looked like some kind of an army officer. But the campaign for the new Braniff was on my shoulders. And we had piles of ideas in the corner on these tissues, piles and piles and piles. And we, and, and we hated everything. She comes down into the room, like the 15th time she's been visit she's done. She looks in the garbage can next to the, my desk and she sees this wrinkled up piece of uh, tissue you know and she pulls it out and she looks and she says what's this we come up with that about once a day I said but we we throw it away because it's, it's just too obvious she says obvious it's divine and she said do that Braniff International is creating the most beautiful airline in the world we hired Emilio Pucci to design our uniforms our hostesses wear reversible coats of almond green and apricot, space helmets to keep out the rain, red space suits, and sometimes something a little more comfortable. And we hired Alexander Girard to do our planes. We have blue planes, orange planes, yellow planes. You can fly with us seven times and never fly the same color twice. Inside, seven different color schemes. And since we fly to Mexico and South America, art from Peru, Brazil, and Argentina. Cha-cha-cha. Braniff International announces the end of the plain plane. We won't get you where you're going any faster, but it'll seem that way. Well, Mary came up with the idea of painting the plane. She was the one who sold, and believe me, that's no small matter, sold the idea to Braniff and got them to do it. She overlooked the design of the uniform. She hired Pucci and she hired Alexander Girard. She got, you know, all the players involved. The advertising part of it was really the last piece, which was how do you announce it to the world? When a Braniff International hostess meets you on the airplane, she'll be dressed like this. We got gorgeous stewardesses in those days. That was an okay thing to do. They were all young and beautiful with beautiful legs. And we made it fun to fly. People flew with us because they were having a theatrical experience. It was a time when people loved marketing. They got it. They understood we were all having fun with each other. The world had been pretty dull after the war and through depressions and mm, And people loved